ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local women, local now. Member FDIC. It is Monday, March 8th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw, hard seltzer, made pure. Well, we're getting closer to the start of the Conference USA tournament this week. And already we've got one change. Conference USA announcing there's a schedule update. The preliminary round game featuring number six Middle Tennessee and number seven FIU. That was set for 8.30 p.m. Canceled due to COVID protocols and contact tracing. So Middle Tennessee automatically advancing to face West Division number three seed North Texas in the first round. Tip-off set for that 10 o'clock on Wednesday. So already we have one elimination, and I think that's going to happen for more of these conference tournaments. We haven't seen much of it yet, but I think it's going to happen a little bit. And what if it happens during the tournament itself, the big one, the one we're all waiting for? So I'm interested to see how that pans out. But right now, one team already eliminated from the Conference USA tournament, and that's disappointing. You work all year long, and you try to get into – a position where you could be in the tournament. And, of course, Middle Tennessee doing its part, trying to stay healthy and and stay COVID-free. And FIU, I'm sure they're trying to do their part as well. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out for FIU. So they're out. Their season's done. They don't. It's like last year, probably, for them the way we were feeling last year. They're probably feeling that, like, okay, these um, these years have just not been good to anyone. And so they're out. The good news is today we find out who made the uh, All-Conference USA first and second teams. And as far as we're concerned, Tavion Kenzie, he's named to the 2021 All-Conference USA first team. And Jared West, named to the conference's second team and all-defensive team. That came out earlier today. We had a chance to catch up with Tavion Kenzie and Jared West. We're going to hear from them a little bit later on. And some good news as well. Savannah Wheeler, named to Conference USA second team. That came out this morning as well. So the sophomore guard from Catlisburg, Kentucky, is Marshall's, get this, leading scorer right now, 17 points per game to go with her team-high 33 three-pointers. She finished the regular season as the conference's sixth leading scorer and was second in free throw percentage, actually leading Conference USA and the latter league-only tilt at 87.5%. So some good news there. Someone who did not make any awards, Andrew Taylor. What happened there? Conference USA not giving any love to Andrew Taylor. So that's going to be, I'm sure, a topic for debate. And if I'm Andrew Taylor right now, that chip on my shoulder, it's growing a little bit. It's growing and it's becoming more and more of a, all right, okay, that's how you think about me. I'm not good enough for first team or second team. All right. A lot of choices to choose from. It's hard. There's only They're only taking five. They're only taking five, and you would think that Tavion was definitely a shoe in for one. Jared probably could have got in as a one. He made the two team. All defensive team, though. That's huge. That's important because that's his specialty. That's what he focuses on. That's what he talks about. That's what he prides himself on. So I think if I'm on the all-defensive team, I mean, he's got a shot at Defensive Player of the Year, but if he's on the all-defensive team, that's good for him. And we're going to hear from him a little bit later on. Maybe you're underselling him just a little bit. So we'll hear him, and we'll hear from Tavion Kinsey as well. Now, today is um, an opportunity for us to talk a little football with you because a Pro Day is coming up. you got Pro Day coming up. And one player in particular that we're going to be keeping our eye on is how he well he does is Brendan Knox. Now, Brendan Knox getting set for his pro day is going to be done a little bit different this year. Of course, you know, we'll find out the results the same time everyone else does. We can't actually be in there and watching pro day. But Brendan Knox talked about his pro day expectations. I mean, he's not cutting back now. He's still going full steam ahead. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not content. I'm never content, but I mean, you just know it's here. Um, don't think two months into it. It's something you've been doing for, you know, years now. So it's not really that big of a, you know, stage, but you definitely want to make an impression. So he's getting his impression out to the NFL, showing everyone what he can do. And I think we all know what he can do. We've been with him for a few years now. And one person that's been with him as well is Tim Cramsey. Cramsey, of course, you know, coaching that offensive side of the ball. He talked about that journey today with Knox. It's been great to watch his journey from a guy who who put his work in, um, you know, when he wasn't the starter here, you know, three years ago to – to, to what he did at that time during fall camp, during spring ball, during the off-season workout program. And it was the same type of effort, the same type of, uh, of attitude he had when he did become the number one, uh, you know, running back at that spot and did become the player of the year in the conference. Um, it's just the way he goes about uh, work every single day, the way he handles himself um, everywhere, and, you, know, to get, you know, not even just a football field, off the field, in the classroom, in the community, everywhere he goes, uh, you know, he, he takes full advantage and attacks every day uh, the way it's supposed to be and the way you want to uh, be able to show young guys coming into the program uh, the way to do things is, is, is the way Knox did it for three years with us then. Tim Cramsey doing a good job of selling Brendan Knox. So we're going to hear more from them throughout the week. Pro Day, we'll have football to talk to you about. We've got basketball for the rest of the week. Marshall in action. Got to play that second day. You don't get that day off. You're going to be playing on Wednesday, and you hope you can advance to Thursday. You got to win four. and That's fine. That's fine. Right? We're good with that. We're good with that. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're good with that. We can handle that. That'll be fun. Before games for the Thundering Herd, win the championship, go on to the NCAA tournament. We're going to hear from Tavion Kinsey. We'll get his thoughts on the honor of being named first team Conference USA. We'll hear from Jared West on being on the defensive team and making second team honors. We'll get your phone calls in as well. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. And we'll talk a little bit later about Andrew Taylor didn't make first team, second team, didn't make any. There's no other honors coming our way. Nothing for us to talk about. This is it. I mean, we won't know defensive player. We're not going to get that. We're not going to get those awards until tomorrow. But as far as uh, any other teams, that's it. Tavion Kinsey, Jared West, that's it. So we will talk to you about that. We'll hear from Tavion. We'll hear from Jared when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Monday edition of The Drive. Paul Swan, your host here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So the awards come out today, all-conference first team, Tavion Kinsey, all-conference second team and defensive team, Jared West, Savannah Wheeler named to the Conference USA second team on the women's side, and that's it. That's all we're getting as far as awards. Now it's up to Marshall's women and men to go out and just win the conference tournament. That's the award they really want. And we talked earlier today to Tavion Kinsey about the honor, and uh, here's what he said when I asked him about it just to talk about it. It's an honor. Uh, last year, I made second team. So um, I was still happy about that. This year, um, we're moving on up. And um, to be a part of the first team, um, to be a part of those guys who are considered first team in the league, that's that's a big honor. Um, really couldn't thank the team more because they put me in that position. Um, Coach Dan, everybody who works with me, who makes sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, um, all the extra hours after practice, all those things. Um, I think that's what really got me to be, you know, put in this position. So I want to thank everybody for that. I talked to him about his spot. He's one of the top five. He's first team. And I said, look, Jared, he's second team, but you wouldn't trade any of those other guys, would you, for Jared? You look at those first teamers, you know, Bassie's on that list, and you think, okay, those are some good guys, but you wouldn't trade for any of them. You wouldn't give up 
Jared West for any of them. And here's what Tavion had to say, and it was really interesting. Man, um, I would put myself out for for that guy. I mean, I we have a talk about it, and I'm biased. You know, I feel like he should be in first team because I don't think it's a person that can lead, you know, better. He's leading in assists. He's leading in steals. Um, that's that's a true point guard, you know, point guards. He does what he's supposed to do. He leads our team. He's a leader, keeps us in order. He's he's led us to a, 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 be, a good record, you know, good enough to get us to three seed. Last year we were the six, so that's big. It's a three spot improvement. That's our leader. We look up to him. He's always focused. Um, best defensive player in the nation. I don't care. Even other schools know that. So it's kind of like, you know, in my eyes, I feel like he should be on first team. But, you know, um, there's five spots um, for him to make all defensive team. That's a big accomplishment. You know, I always guarantee that's going to happen. But um, I'm just proud of both of us for what we have accomplished this year so far. And he's right. If you don't have Jared West on your defensive list, then your list is no good. It invalidates it. If Jared West is not in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year or on the all-defensive team, if he's not on that list, your list is no good. But he's on the second team. He's also on that all-defensive team list. And here is what Jared West had to say when I asked him about, hey, you, you, you're hearing what your guy's talking about. He'd give up his spot thinking you should be on that first team. Big honor to be on second team. Talking to Tay a minute ago, he said he trades spots with you since he thinks you're a first teamer. What goes through your mind when you get honors like that and then a guy like Tavion, who uh, is also worthy of first team, would give up his spot for you? Um, well, first of all, like you said, it's a great honor. Um, it's a great accomplishment. I'm honored to receive that type of uh, recognition throughout the conference. Um, you know, I'm really blessed that we're playing basketball right now still. You know, we've we've uh, we've had a tough year, ups and downs. You know, we've had some cancellations. We've had some quarantines, you know, but we're still playing, so that's good. But, um, you know, I appreciate Tavion saying that. Tavion clearly, obviously, um, deserves first team. And uh, for him to say that, that's uh, that means a lot to me. You know, I feel like Tavion, Tavion's a really good player, and obviously we've had a bond kind of since the moment he's gotten here. Um, to where we've always just, we've been close. You know, we talk a lot. We do a lot of things together, obviously playing with each other for now three years. So that means a lot for me. And honestly, you know, like I get why I didn't get first team. You know, if we'd have won a couple more games and we'd have been maybe first or second, you know, maybe I could see it. But I understand why I didn't get it. So I'm not really too too upset about it, honestly. I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm, I'm blessed to be second team all conference. I appreciate the love that the conference gave me and, that Tavion just just gave me just now. So, and um, everything that Tavion gets, he deserves too. By the way, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Tavion definitely clear first teamer and uh, honestly potential player of the year if you ask me. So, uh, that that means a lot for me for sure. He's right. Tavion in my mind could be player of the year in Conference USA. He's definitely a candidate for it. Knowing this league, knowing the people that vote for these honors, it's probably going to Bassey. I don't know that. I'm just guessing. It's probably going to Bassey. He's won Player of the Week often in several consecutive weeks, it feels like. It's probably going to him. But I think Tavion Kinsey can play with anybody in this league. And if you talk about the combination – one thing that Jared, I think, brings to this team, and Tavion talked about it, it's just the calming effect. He's When he's out there, he's a leader. When he wasn't on the floor, he was a leader. He was out there coaching. He was doing things on the bench when he couldn't play. And Tavion talked about that effect he has on this team. Let's go back to North Texas. North Texas, when he didn't play, you know, um, he was on the bench with – like you would think he was a part of the coaching staff, you know, he was, um, he kept us in order. He was telling us what to do. You, you could hear him. It was like he was out there on the court just without him being out there on the court. Like we felt his presence. And I think that's what helped us win a lot, you know, um, then coming out this week, um, you know, he's injured and, but he's fighting and he ended up going out there to play 
And I think, you know, one play that sticks in my mind is the end of the game where they just kept, you know, getting past us, get a foul, getting past us, getting a foul. He's like, let me guard him. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, man, you can't even move. You know what I'm saying? Then he just takes the ball from him at the end of the game. And I think that just like deflated their confidence all the way. Like you just let somebody with half of an ankle, like take the ball from you really. But this is the best defensive player that you probably will ever go against. And um, he definitely keeps us calm. Like I said, he keeps us in order. That's our leader. That's who we look to when times get, you know, shaky. Uh, he definitely is our defensive leader. Tells us what to do if anybody needs help. He keeps them in order and things like that. So he does a great job at that. That's why I think he's gotten the accolades that he has today. The accolades he got, second team, all defensive team. But you know, he could have been a first teamer. He could have been a first-teamer. So if I'm him, if I'm Andrew Taylor, I'm thinking to myself, okay, all right, you got that. We're going to get this. And I would put that energy towards going out there, showing them why they were wrong or maybe didn't value you as much. And you talk to Jared West, and he he already plays with a chip. If you, you see him play out there – and for many of you, you've seen him for several years. I wouldn't want to be the guy who's um, being guarded by him for one. I wouldn't want to guard him. I wouldn't want to deal with him because he does have a chip on his shoulder. And this maybe will have a little bit more influence on how big that chip gets. I feel like there's always that little chip, you know, on my shoulder when it comes to things like that. Uh, but but for sure, you know, I want to go down there. And the most important thing is the win. You know, I remember when John – my freshman year, he, John led the league in scoring and assists. We were the four seed. John didn't win player of the year. Uh, Nick King did. And John looked at me, and I was, like, I said something to him about it. And he was like, man, let's just go win the tournament. That shuts everything up. And at the end of the day, that's uh, that's kind of how it is right now. So I feel like if uh, I definitely have that chip on my shoulder, I feel like we, I and the team have something to prove, really. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like um, – if we win the tournament, none of that other stuff matters, you know. So I feel like that's the main focus right now to go down there focused and uh, and win the tournament. But with definitely something to prove, with definitely with a chip on our shoulder, and like we just talked about, with the bitter taste that was left in our mouth from last year, we still feel like we do have some unfinished business. So um, I'm really excited for this week, and um, I'm ready to go for sure. One of the things we talked to these guys about, and we got a lot of it from Tavion, was just the fact that Tavion and Jared. Those guys have really formed a bond. They they talk to each other. I mean, Tavion would give his spot up for Jared. You can just feel that bond, that chemistry together. And Tay talked about that. I think that's going to be important when we get to all the action here. When you have a bond like Tavion and like Jared, that's going to come in really handy in key moments. There's not going to be any dissension on that court. There's not going to be guys getting on each other in the wrong way. I think you're going to have guys picking each other up, and you see that with Tavion and Jared. And Tavion talked about that bond he has with Jared. Um, just being able to step up and be leaders on this team, um, I think that's made us grow tighter. Um, knowing that we have to step up, we have to keep the team in order. Um, you know, since COVID shut us down, people can lose focus. You know, we tried our best to make sure guys were doing what they're supposed to do when the shutdown happened, staying safe the best that we could. You know, it got some of us, but, you know, we stayed safe for the most part. And it was inevitable that some of us was going to catch it. But um, I think it, it just grew tighter as we grew older, um, became and stepped into our roles as leaders of this team because we both came in and we both were guys who had to look up to some guys and, um, you know, listen to them. And we took that and then we turned it into now where it's time for us to leave. So we learned from them and we bring it into this team and um, we make sure we never are on a different page. You know, I think that's the most important thing. We make sure that even if we have, you know, some um, differences that we, we make sure that we talk it out. We're not going to argue in front of people. We make sure as mature as possible and how to keep our heads so that our team sees that we're keeping our heads. And anytime I'm down, he picks me up. Anytime I'm down, he, I, pick, I mean, he's down, I pick him up. So I think it's, it's grown a lot. We now get to the obvious questions. 
You know, those questions that uh, we keep in our back pocket, we ask every time it's tournament time. And especially with the way a tournament ended last year, some unfinished business, and Jared West is just chomping at the bit. He is just chomping at the bit to get back to Texas. Man, I feel like we've been itching to get back for a while now. You know, I I remember that day. That was a that was frustrating for me. That was a hard day. You know, I kind of rolled up and and cried in the bed for a little bit because I was pretty upset. But um, it, it left a bitter taste in my mouth. Really, like I, I just felt like. I can't remember what it, we had a similar finish to the season last year, like five out of seven wins, like, or something like that, five out of six, something like that. And I feel like we were just really, we were starting to get going. We were rolling. Um, we were playing well at the right time. Um, we beat UTEP. We were feeling pretty good. And UTEP, like, some UTEP was not a bad team for sure. Like, they had some good guys. And we were about to play La Tech, who we had beat early in the year. So we were feeling really confident about where we were at. And, um, you know, things out of our control kicked in and we, we didn't get to play. So we've definitely been um, – we've it's definitely crossed our mind. You know, obviously we want to stay focused on the task at hand. We want to stay focused on this year and everything like that. But um, at the end of the day, it, it's hard not to think about, you know, because you always wonder, like, what could have happened or what would have happened if we would have played and finished out the week. So it's tough not to think about, but, um, you know, it, it's here now. <laughs> it's crazy to think about, but – Five out of six. Yeah, so it's crazy to think about, but um, we're back here now, so it's time to stay focused, lock in, and and uh, get ready for Wednesday. Getting ready for Wednesday, Tavion Kinsey also, I don't know, chomping at the bit, ready to go, let's play now, whatever the emotion is, uh, he's ready and he wants to play as well. Um, I think uh, it, it, it always sticks around with you, you know, it uh, – stays in your mind that, hey, uh, we didn't get to finish something that we started. You know, um, it's been on our minds all year. Uh, more so it's been on, I don't think we've been thinking so much about that, except for like, we don't always look ahead at what's coming up. You know, we look at right now and we never knew what games we were going to play, what games was going to get shut down, things like that. I think we were more worried about that. But now the conference is coming, I think it's when weighing on everybody's mind more that, you know, we, we got some unfinished business. Um, and that's how we look at it. You know, we're not there mad or anything. We get another shot at it. You know, last year was last year. We would like to start out how we started last year and see where that would take us. But, you know, last year was last year. We're going to have to come in this year. Teams are better. Teams have gotten better. Um, you know, we gotten better. So we're, we're looking to, you know, match up against whoever and play them. Tavion Kinsey wanting to get back after, well, unfinished business. Got to leave that on the table and go and take on everyone and, and start anew. We will get your phone calls in 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. We've got more coming up. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to be a part of today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So some good news today. First team, Tavion Kinsey. Second team, Jared West. Where's Andrew Taylor to be found? He's nowhere to be found. You think that's going to really set him off as far as he's, is he going to be that kind of guy that just looks at that and goes, okay, I'm not your guy, huh? I didn't make the list, huh? Okay. Well, if that's the case, I'll show you what you missed out on. Is he going to be that guy? Is that going to fire him up? Is he going to be like a little Jared West there? Can you call him a little Jared West? Because Jared's not exactly a tall player. Can you call him little Jared going out there? And honestly, I don't know if you can you can you can fire up anyone more than Jared West, but I think hanging out with him, I think Andrew Taylor might get hot. He might be the wild card here in all of this. Um, we got some volleyball results to tell you about. Volleyball dropping at Middle Tennessee fell in four sets to the Blue Raiders today. Marshall's now six and four overall, four and four in Conference USA. Middle Tennessee improves to two and seven, 
and two and five in league play. So hopefully we'll hear from Ari Agnes this week. I'm trying to get her on the program, talk about where she's at now. Six and four is still pretty good. And then softball today. Let's talk softball. And we're hoping to get Megan Smith Lyon on this week. But as far as what softball has been doing, dropped a ma- they dropped one. They're not perfect now. They're six and one. They dropped one. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. They played a pretty good schedule. And the good news coming out of the league today is Marshall softball senior pitcher Laney Jones named Conference USA Pitcher of the Week. And this is the first weekly honor for her from CUSA. She appeared in four contests, highlighted by two complete game shutouts. She finished with an ERA of just 1.02 for the week. Nick Verzellini. What's up? What's up? Intern, show producer. I mean, I, we you're my intern, but we're just going to call you show producer, okay? Yeah, I, we're not going to make that distinction. Seems fair. Yeah, you've been watching softball. Um, what's it look like over there? You've been you've seen a lot more than I have. Well, I was at baseball this week. But... You were baseball? Okay, so basically, hey, uh, Nick Verzellini, how's baseball looking? So what you're telling me I need to do? Well, uh, they, they looked pretty solid in game one. Uh, game three kind of... Came down to a few mental mistakes late. They had a 2-1 lead. Uh, seemed to be pitching really well from their freshman, Adkinson. He was on the mound. He was pitching well. And then kind of down the stretch, they fell apart with a few walks that led to some runs and uh, got down, I guess it was 6-2. to two. Ended up being the final, I think. So, you know, it was a bad stretch there that – Fell apart in game three. Game two was an exciting game, but it was at Moorhead, so I didn't get to see it. But it's 13 10, 23 runs scored. Uh, and Ryan Leach is swinging a really good bat. He uh, actually was drafted out of high school in the 30th round by the Reds. So some high expectations there, and he seems to be coming all around uh, in year two. But Jordan Bland's a stud for them at shortstop. Um, he looks good early on. They have a really good offense. It's going to come down to pitching, I think, for them though, this year. How's Wags? Is Wags still wagging? I uh, haven't really had the chance to talk to Wags yet, but um, I'm he pr- sure, he probably you know. likes it that way. He probably likes it not not you personally, just no, eh, you know I'm done. Yeah, I mean I know typically he doesn't really uh, come over that much, and right now with COVID, you know he can't come over, so um, you know, he's not doing anything with Zoom or anything like that. So I'm sure he's fine with that. <laughs> All right, Nick Verzellini, he's um interning for us here he's uh you're uh spencer dupuis 2.0 i have to be that title i prefer just intern okay you are intern 877-420-TALK 877-420-8255 more coming up it's the drive espn 94.1 and am 930 on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our phone lines this hour brought to you by White Wall, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Paul Swan, show producer Nick Verzellini with us. The Thundering Herd making its way to Conference USA Tournament. The women, guess what? The women, we're going to be talking to them here in a few minutes. We'll have that for you tomorrow on the show, but uh, everything is going well. The ladies are on time, on schedule in their travel, so I'm going to be on a uh, call with them here in the next few minutes, and uh, we'll have that for you tomorrow on the program as Tony Kemper and his squad getting set for the Conference USA tournament as well. I like their chances. I'm not saying that they're going to win the thing, but they're going to be hard to get out. That's going to be a team that's a hard out. And that's a team that you have seen a lot more of, Nick, the women. You've seen a lot more of them. So when I throw it to you this time, you're not going to throw a curveball back at me. You've seen them. Yeah, well, I said earlier uh, during the season when um, they were playing, I think it was probably the Western Kentucky game, which was a big win for that team, that I think this is the best team Coach Kemper's had. And that ended up being pretty true, I think, because obviously they beat Western, beat Rice. 
we'll see how they do in the tournament, beat Middle Tennessee. So uh, this is a really quality team. They go pretty deep. Unfortunately for them early in the year, they didn't have their full roster due to COVID and some injuries. So once they kind of got healthy and started to get rolling, I think they showed their talent, and uh, we'll see how it plays out here in March. I mean, but they're certainly a dangerous team um, with a lot of talent and one of the better teams that Coach Kemper's had, if not the best team that he's had so far. Yeah, they get hot. They're going to be a tough out. And, of course, if I've – if I'm playing on that team, maybe I've got a chip on my shoulder as well. Maybe I'm Savannah Wheeler with a big chip on my so- shoulder right now. Oh, I'm second team, huh? I don't know how individual players all react different to that. But does Wheeler just go, all right, I'm second team, huh? All right, I'll show you. I'll show you. I mean, she's scoring 17 a contest. And she's hitting three-pointers pretty well. She's the conference's sixth leading scorer. She's hitting free throws like crazy. Maybe she's not a first teamer, but I bet she makes them pay for it, or at least somebody's going to get uh, get schooled on that basketball court because of it. Yeah, she's really good. I mean, Miss Kentucky basketball heading in, so that was a huge recruit and a huge get for Marshall at the time, and you know she's developed into already, I think, one of the best players in program history, or at least could be one of the best players in program history. Um, you know, I, I expect her to lead this team. They, they need her, her to score, especially with Mayo out now with the injury that she suffered that ended her season. So, uh, you know, her, Cole Claw, um, Taylor Pearson, I think they're going to need them to all be huge. But, you know, Lorelai Roper stepped up big in the post. And one thing uh, in the past that Marshall struggled with is having size to defend some of these taller teams like Rice and Middle Tennessee uh, due to injuries. Uh, this year they've stayed healthy down low so far. So hopefully that keeps up and uh, they can continue to execute and play well. Going to hear from him tonight, and we'll have that for you later on in the week. Probably tomorrow we'll get a lot of that, but uh, the tournament begins for the Thundering Herd, the same it does for the men. Thankfully, no Tuesday games. That was the thing you're wanting to avoid, playing on Tuesday. Marshall did enough to avoid the Tuesday slot, and I was joking with Coach Chimper. I said, okay, are you the best five seed now? You're going to be a tough five seed since he said that they would be a, a tough six or seven seed. So move one slot up, and there you go. But at least they get to play. Not like FIU on the men's side, not able to play because of COVID. And I'm not surprised there. I'm surprised we haven't heard anything yet from all the other teams as well. This is like only one team has covid out so far, and I'm okay with that. I mean, if we can get this tournament in, that'll be a plus because last year was just so surreal. You Were you there last year? Did you go with MUL? It was just uh, – No, we didn't make the trip. Okay, yeah, it was just Jason. It was just Jason Courier doing the games last year. Yeah, I was producing when Jason made the announcement that they had canceled the tournament. So it was an interesting time. And, of course, you know, for both the men and the women, we're looking forward to it. Women were going to take on Rice and – just all of a sudden just stop opportunity here for the thundering herd to, to they were looking good too i know that's easy to say right now because they they were winning they were looking good the men were looking good and it's easy to say hey you know so many things but you know you throw all of that out because that isn't relevant here now i mean tavion still remembers of course tavion remembers everything i swear he is michael jordan marshall style he, I don't think he's sitting there going, you know, that guy was talking about me. I don't think he's doing that, but he's manufacturing stuff. He's pulling up Charlotte, beating them last year. I mean, Charlotte hadn't won six games straight. They lost six in a row. And Tavion's like, yeah, I don't care, man. They beat us last year. I don't care. I mean, I think he's manufacturing stuff, and it's working. Definitely. I mean, but all the greats do that, right? I mean, Jordan, Kobe, and now Tavion, right? Yeah. He's the next one. I manufacture stuff all the time about people. All the time. I'm not going to say what I'm – I don't – I'm not going to tell you what I do, but, yeah, I make up I make up stuff all the time just to get me fired up. You got to. That's how you can keep your competitive drive. Right, right. Um, I'll even I'll even text a couple of people just to, just to talk trash to them. I'm not going to tell you who those people are, but I just, let's just say they're, they're, they're semi-known. And I will text them now and then just to talk trash about them or or get myself fired up. And they are they're in they're in my realm here. 
they're in this room. I mean, no, it's not Spencer Dupuy, our former intern here. How long can we make that joke run? I think that joke has run its course. We think Probably, we, we need yeah. to move on. But we know to, Spencer's listening. Yeah, that's the thing. We know Spencer's listening. We need, you know, we need to stop that. We we need to mo- move on and, and focus on. Uh, you, we got to come up with some better jokes here, some better material. But uh, we're finally here in a couple of days. We're going to be like right where we want to be. Right now, we're just waiting. It's like, okay, hey, what's up with the team today? Well, they practiced. They traveled. Team practiced, and then they uh, headed off. They made it to Lexington, so they're on their way now. But they practiced earlier this afternoon, and they did all their testing early in the morning. I guess everything came out okay. We haven't heard anything, so that's good news. And then, of course, the women, you know, they, um, they're they arriving, and they're on schedule, and they seem to be okay as well, so we haven't heard anything there. So I guess, again, no news is good news, but I can tell you that the uh, the women are doing fine. They're there, and... Uh, the men are um, charting their path as we speak. How tough is that? Though they gotta, they gotta go on the bus, gotta mask up. Then they gotta get to where they're going to get on a plane to get to where they're going. It's tough. I mean, especially the way they have to do this here. They're what twelve hours and on a a trip, something like that, maybe with all those you know, restrictions on them. I mean, that's tough. That's completely tough, and of course they can't fly out of uh, Tri-State or or Jaeger. They got to go to Lexington to get a, a better flight or get a proper flight. So that adds to the trip. They're not chartering, and with budgets being the way they are, yeah, the schools that are still doing it, you know, good on you. But Marshall can't just snap its fingers and say, "Here's some money to go charter a flight and to make that trip shorter." It's uh, basketball is completely different. I mean, they're on the bus. You know, it's planes, trains, and automobiles just about for them. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, they're there. Uh, they're on their way. The women are there. And as I said, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hop on a Zoom here in a minute with the women. So I wish that was like an hour earlier so we could have uh, brought that to you. But we're gonna we're gonna get that to you, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Well, you won't be, Nick. You're. Um, how do interns get days off? Classes. Okay. Let's say how how do you get in it? Like yeah, I just um, I'll be I'll be here Monday, not when not Tuesday, Wednesday maybe. All right. Um, thankfully, I have uh, plenty of stuff for tomorrow. I will uh, I will do without your services. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Back tomorrow, we'll do it all over again right here on ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty.